So one way to find the enthalpy change for an equation uses what's known as Hess's law. And the way you use Hess's law isn't that unlike a common thing you do in algebra. Say for example you got x plus y equal 36 and you got another equation equal we have y equals z plus x. All right, early on in algebra you know you were taught how to add equations together. All right, in this case you see the x's are on opposite sides so they drop out. So when you add them together you get 2y equals z plus 36. Right. Hess's law um, does the same sort of thing, but instead of working with algebra equations, we kind of use that trick with chemical equations. Like for example, you can take these two equations, and if you add them together, like the X's did a minute ago, you know, carbon monoxide is going to cancel out because it's a product in one or reacting in the other. You add everything else down, you get carbon, half and a half give you one O2 equals or produces CO2. What Hess's law says is that when you add two equations together like we did here, the enthalpy change for that reaction is the sum of the enthalpy change for the equations that were added together. A lot of times though when you're given equations, um, sometimes you're not given them where you automatically can add them, add them together. Uh, for example, all right, a typical Hess's law problem might be set up like this, where you're trying to find the enthalpy change of this equation, and you're given these three equations here. Now, if you just try to add them up like we did a minute ago, they're not going to come anywhere close to the one they're asking for. So a lot of times you have to modify the equation so they will add properly. But when you modify the equation, you got to modify the enthalpy change as well. So for example, look at this first equation here. In this equation we have hydrogen fluoride shown. And if you look, this is the only place we see hydrogen fluoride for these three given equations. So whatever we do to hydrogen fluoride, it, or whatever we do this equation, it better be set up where we have the proper coefficient and HF is on the proper side of the equation. So if you look, it's on the proper side because it's a product here and it's a product in the equation we want, but you only have two in the given equation and we need four. So we can fix that by multiplying this equation by 2. Now we're changing the coefficients of hydrogen and fluorine, but since we took care of HF, then hopefully these will work themselves out. And you'll see later on they do. But one thing about working with Hess's law, whatever you do to the equation, you're going to have to do the same thing to your enthalpy change. All right, we're doubling the coefficient, so we got to double the delta H. Look at the second equation. Again, try to focus on a substance that you only see in this one equation. 
right, when you compare it to the equation you want. So in this case, we kind of we want to focus on C2H4, better known as ethylene. Right, so you have one ethylene on the right, but in the equation that we want, we have one on the left. So we're going to have to flip this equation around. So when you flip the equation, you effectively have to flip the sign around, which means plus 52 turns into negative 52. And for this last equation, we want to focus on CF4 because carbon's not even in the equation we want. All right, fluorine's actually in a couple of places, so it might be a headache trying to fix fluorine. So again, whatever we do to CF4 and this, or whatever we do to this equation, we have to fix it where CF4 is in the right place with the right coefficient. These other two will hopefully work themselves out. So here we have one on the reactant side, but we want two on the product side. So we're going to have to multiply it by two. And we're going to have to flip it around to put it on the product side of the equation. So we've got to take our enthalpy change, we've got to multiply it by 2, and we're going to have to flip the sign. All right, so when we look at our modified equations, and there's our first equation modified where now the coefficients have been multiplied by 2, although I left off the 4, didn't I? there we go. And we've gone ahead and multiplied the delta H. We flip this equation around, and again we flip the sign. And for our last equation, we had to do both flip it and double. And so again, we flip the sign and we doubled it. So when you add these three equations together, Notice that the things that weren't part of the overall equation, or the things we didn't want in the overall equation, our hydrogens, those carbons, they cancel out because they're on opposite sides of our arrow. So it leaves you with one C2H4 plus six fluorines. See, the fluorines did work themselves out. Gives you two CF4s and four HFs. Again, that is the equation that we want. And so, like Hess's law says, once again, when you add the equations together, the enthalpy change for this re added this reaction that you got from adding the equations together is going to be the sum of the enthalpy changes for each equation that you added.